Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I am gonna explain a 2013 American comedy and fantasy movie called R.I.P.D. Nick Walker is a detective from the Boston Police Department. He buries a gold artifact that he stole from a drug dealer during a drug bust under an orange tree in his backyard. The next day, Nick goes to work as usual while his wife, Julia, starts her day with jogging along the road. At the office, Nick talks to his partner, Bobby, about his intention to turn the gold in as evidence. However, Bobby, who also has the gold in his possession, disagrees with the idea, saying that they could earn a lot of money from the gold. As Bobby is almost convinced to turn in his gold too, their boss suddenly comes in and gives them another drug bust mission. They immediately drive over to the crime scene and with the help of a group of police, they break into the abandoned building. Turns out that the gangsters have been waiting for them and the gunfight ensues. Nick spots the drug dealer, attempting to chase him to the top of the building. Suddenly, Bobby shows up, telling Nick that he's not going to turn in his gold. As a result, he shoots Nick, who eventually dies. Afterwards, Nick wakes up, discovering that time around him has stopped. He walks out of the building and then gets drawn into the mysterious vortex. Nick ends up in an office where a woman named Proctor offers him a job in RIPD, or rest in peace department because he used to be a skillful police officer. Nick initially thinks that it's just a joke, but she then explains that he's dead and soon will be sent to judgment. So she gives him a chance to return to Boston for the last time while working for RIPD to capture dead people who have managed to escape judgment, called Dettos. Nick agrees to the offer and officially becomes a RIPD officer, proved by a RIPD tattoo on his chest. On his first day in the office, Proctor brings him to Ripped HQ, where he learns that Dettos or dead people are now looking like monsters instead of human beings. She then introduces him to Roy, an ex-marshal in the 1800s who will become his partner. In RIPD, they use the toilet as a portal that transfers them to Earth. Since it's his first day, Roy takes Nick to his own funeral where he attempts to talk to Julia, but she doesn't t recognize him. Nick also tries to attack Bobby there. After that, Roy reveals that Nick has given a new body and must accept his new identity, which makes him look like an old Chinese grandpa while his partner is granted a model body. On their way, Roy reminds his partner to forget his past and focus on his task as RIPD officer because chasing Julia will be a waste of time. In the evening, they go to an apartment to hunt a Dedo. Roy gives Nick special bullets, which are used to kill Dedos and must be shot in the head. They eventually arrive at Dedo's room. The Dedo still looks like a normal human being, so the RIPD officers provoke him until he transforms into a terrifying Dedo monster. At first, Dedo is not as aggressive as he looks. As Nick begins to cuff his hands, he becomes enraged and wreaks havoc on the entire room. He eventually jumps off the window, so do the officers. Because they're already dead, they are not injured at all and are finally able to corner the Dedo. Just before Roy shoots the Dedo, he vomits some gold artifacts which are similar to the ones Nick stole before. Nick becomes curious about the gold artifacts, but his partner keeps babbling about his performance, which makes Nick mad and then throws him to a bus, causing him to lose his beloved hat. As they return to the ripped HQ, Nick tells his partner that the Dedo was trying very hard to protect the gold from them, but Roy thinks that it's just a useless and cheap gold, then turns it to another officer. Because Nick keeps insisting to find out about the gold, they attend a baseball match to meet with Roy's informant, Elliot. Nick asks the informant about the gold, but he also claims that it is worthless and means nothing to them. Not satisfied with the answer, Nick gives him the gold and secretly observes Nick's movement from a distance. As expected, Elliot arranges a meeting with a man who turns out to be Bobby, Nick's ex-partner, and subsequently hands him the gold. They follow Bobby from behind, who eventually stops by at Nick's house. Nick sneaks into the house and eavesdrops on his conversation with Julia. Nick is confused when finding out that his ex-partner is asking about Nick's gold. Julia and Bobby go to the backyard where the man retrieves the gold buried under the orange tree. Julia is very upset after knowing that his husband was a thief. The pair then follow Bobby to a building where they see Bobby hand over the gold to a Dedo named Pulaski. Afterwards, they immediately confront the Dedo, lock him inside a freezer, and then interrogate him. Since he refuses to talk, Nick baits him with a special powder. He consumes the powder and transforms into a giant monster. Pulaski escapes with his horrifying body shape, attracting nearby public attention. Roy attempts to capture the Dedo with his weapon, but he's not strong enough, causing him to be pulled away by the monster. After a long chase, a lot of destroyed cars, numerous bullets wasted, Pulaski finally gets cornered inside a building, 
so he decides to flee through the elevator shaft. Nick tries to block him with the elevator, but fails. Returning to the HQ, Proctor seems upset because they let an exposed Deto loose on the street, but she also has good news for them. She reveals that the gold are actually part of a dangerous artifact, known as the Staff of Jericho. She warns them that if all the pieces are put together, a big vortex will be created which allows the dead people to come back to Earth. The bad news is, Roy and Nick are suspended and most likely will be erased entirely from the world because of their failure to capture a Deto. Since tomorrow might be his last day, Nick returns to Earth and confronts Julia in the jogging track. He tries to convince his wife that he's Nick, but she doesn't believe him as all she sees is an old Chinese man. Roy appears and tells his partner to focus on the job, but Nick makes it clear that there is nothing he can do. Roy begins to babble again until Nick finally realizes that he must fight for one last time or it will be a total destruction for Earth. Nick grows suspicious of Bobby, assuming that he's also a deado, but still hasn't got any evidence about it. On the other hand, Bobby meets with another deado. He gives him an artifact, telling him to distract the RIPD with it. In the morning, Nick and Roy arrive at Bobby's house, planning to arrest him, but Bobby is prepared for them. He welcomes Roy and allows him to enter the house, while Nick sneaks in from the back door, catching him off guard. He threatens him with the gun, ordering Bobby to take off the artifact on his wrist. As Bobby throws the metal away, the house suddenly alters into a half-destroyed building. Bobby is then arrested and Roy seizes the remaining gold. They bring Bobby to Ripped HQ where they confiscate all the stuff belonging to Bobby. Unfortunately, one of them is an artifact that can freeze time. When it meets the other part of the artifact, it explodes and slows down all the officer's movement, except the deados. The dead people use this opportunity to steal all the gold from the HQ. As the time goes back to normal, the deados have managed to escape to Earth. The deados climb to the top of the Commonwealth building and immediately begin reassembling the staff of Jericho. Upon arrival on Earth, Roy, Nick, and the others have to fight their way to the building as the deados have been waiting for them. Roy, who used to be a skillful cowboy, shows off his shooting ability, eliminating all the deados in front of him. Shortly after, the buildings in Boston begin to collapse while the detectives drive their way to the building. Meanwhile, Julia is picked up by Bobby S. Henchman because they plan to have lunch together earlier. Just after Julia arrives at the building, Bobby reveals his true identity to her, which shocks the woman. Back to the detectives, they are confronted by Pulaski, but they just hit him with the car, crash him into the nearby building, then shoot him. Moments later, the staff is fully assembled and a vortex is formed. Roy and Nick appear to rescue Julia, but Bobby stabs her first and then uses her blood to power up the staff. Because of that, the dead souls begin to rain down. The detectives fight all the deados and manage to defeat all of them. Since it has Bobby remaining, they decide to split up, Roy attempts to destroy the staff while Nick distracts Bobby. As Nick is getting beaten up repeatedly, Roy pulls down a vehicle which destroys the artifact completely. The vortex eventually disappears and Nick shoots Bobby in the head, erasing him entirely from the world. On the verge of death, Julia finally can see Nick's real face and body. He apologizes, then begs Julia to move on with her life. She suddenly wakes up in a hospital where Proctor disguises herself as a doctor to ensure that Julia is okay. As a result of their heroic actions, Nick has been let off with a warning while Roy has to extend his service at RIPD for another 53 years. Additionally, she also gives him back his beloved hat. Before they both depart, Roy gives Nick a new identity. He's relieved, but until he finds out that he now appears as a Girl Scout with orthodontic headgear on. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.